Dude, you guys are in for a really, really good video, especially for the Dark Ether audio. So with this video, you know what it is. I'm playing you guys all the intel, the radios, the transmissions, and also the documents, which, by the way, the documents I'm not going to leave on screen for too long. If you want to read them all the way through, uh, just pause the screen just because I don't want the video to be too long. So I'm going to leave it up for five seconds. Pause it if you want to read it and stuff like that. Also, if you guys want to learn how to get all the intel, I will be making a video very soon after this and uh, hopefully it'll be up the exact same day as this one and you can know rather by clicking on my channel or there'll be a card on screen hopefully whenever it's done. Um, and that's all I needed to say. Uh, actually, just listen to Dark Ether Audio. The Dark Ether Audio is amazing, trust me. But anyways, I'm going to be quiet and uh, I'll let you guys enjoy. My adjustments, Dr. Fulner. You may begin recording. Thank you, I already have. This is Ulrich Vogel, director of Project N Station, 7th of March, 1944, 10.03 p.m. Commencing cyclotron test run number 12. Dr. Kurtz, please proceed. All readings are within acceptable parameters. Looks like we are getting the collisions we expected and, um, some interesting patterns are starting to... What was that? I, I, I do not know. Gages are redlining. We have to shut down. My God, what is happening to the air around the collider? You men, get away from that! Station, 12th of March, 1944. Five days have passed since the accident. I am starting to see it not as a setback, but a breakthrough, literally. The cyclotron continues to operate, apparently without an external power source. We cannot deactivate it, and it is still manifesting the strange phenomenon I call a rift. And Kurtz calls a wormhole. He attached instruments to the end of a long metal pole and passed it through the rift. The readings confirm that somehow the cyclotron ripped through the fabric of space-time. Something lies on the other side. A parallel world, or perhaps a whole universe. But we dare not approach too closely lest we suffer the same fate as the men currently held in our medical clinic. Those men remain in a state best described as living death. Kurt thinks they caught a high dose of some exotic radiation from the other side of the rift. We are checking their blood and tissue samples for traces of rare elements or otherworldly pathogens. Strike team. Weaver here. I understand this has been a lot to take in. Interdimensional breaches all over the world. An infection transforming people into the undead. Not exactly a great two weeks for any of us. Requiem had to react quickly. The same day I was personally requested to run field ops. I was ordered to assemble a short list of operatives. That's you guys. Here's what we know. Two weeks ago, a KGB Spetsnaz unit known as Omega Group came here and reactivated its particle accelerator. Their actions caused the outbreak zones we're now seeing around the world. This place is ground zero. Why they did it and to what end, that's what we're gonna figure out. We lost two teams before learning about the site. 
Make their sacrifices count. Let's get some answers. Oh, one more thing. Don't be surprised if the other division leads contact you, introduce themselves. They're experts in their field, so show some respect and play nice. <clears throat> Strike team, you there? Of course you are, sorry. <laughs> I'm a bit new to all this. Hopefully you don't mind the less than formal approach. Should probably introduce myself. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Gray, head of our natural sciences. And, well, this is about as unnatural a Sunday as I can remember. <laughs> hey, normally, about now, I'd be sitting in my lab in Bristol, having a good natter with Pip and Sam, the two McCorks I work with, over a nice cup of tea. Then, just BAM! This whole thing happens. Next thing I know, I'm drafted by the bloody government to be the representative in this new organization, Requiem. I mean, how could I pass that up? Sure, the name sounds a bit ominous, but think of the opportunity. The potential discoveries that await us in this new reality. There's a chance that I could end up changing the world. Yes, I know it seems like the proverbial dimension of death has opened right in our back garden, but there's real life to it. And that's including the infected undead. The untapped potential of this discovery, this ethereum, it could provide us with the tools to grow, evolve even, as a people and a society. Imagine that. No more war. Or at the very least, less war. But you'd have a job though, wouldn't it? No offence, of course. There are precious few things in the world more valuable than knowledge. And one of those is the ability to know how and when to utilize said knowledge. Do you know who said that? I did not think so. Dr. Fogel, the scientist in charge of Project End Station, said it to me some 40 years ago when I was employed at this very facility. I know you have your suspicions about me. I hear what your type says about me in the halls. My God, is that Dr. Oscar Strauss, former Nazi scientist? They put him in charge of energy research? It is so horrible. <clears throat> to this, I have two things to say. One, I was never a fucking Nazi. I am and always have been a man of science trying to survive in a nasty, despicable world. Two, I do not care if you have your suspicions. All I care is if you are able to follow your orders. This energy source, the Germans called it Exo Element One. I call it by its proper name, Ethereum. It has the potential to revolutionize the world in ways we cannot possibly comprehend. I will understand these crystals. And I will learn the how and when to utilize it. I hope, if nothing else, you can appreciate that. All I ask is that if you let me do my job, I will let you do yours. There's no need to be enemies. In fact, one day I hope we can work together side by side. Perhaps we will even consider each other comrades. Just do not expect a warm hug when you return from your missions. Strike team, do you read me? Oh, finally, strong signal. I know the circumstances are less than ideal, but allow me to formally introduce myself. I am Major Mackenzie Carver. My friends call me Mac. You will not. And yes, I am that Major Carver. Most likely all the stories you've heard are true. But that is in the past. I'm a firm believer in living in the now and preparing for the future. As you may well know, I head up Requiem's Containment and Security Division. It's a post I personally requested. Make no mistake, we are at war. This is chess. And the Soviet's Omega Group? <laughs> they just moved their queen into position. They're the ones who opened these portals, and you bet your ass it's to get some sort of tactical advantage over us. This is an entirely new dimension we're dealing with. The technology it could potentially offer is unfathomable. We may have nukes, but what if your enemy uses an interdimensional weapon? Something we can't anticipate encounter. This is the new arms race, and we've already fallen behind. Now look. I got nothing against these eggheads and their scientific pursuits. I'm just...
just here to make sure the DOD gets what's rightfully theirs. That includes Strauss and his Ethereum crystals. If we're to regain the advantage over our enemy, we need to act fast and make sure these science types don't keep anything from us. Don't let me down. Such machinery? Only in nightmares, Dmitriev. You there! By the big machine! Surrender! I said surrender! What do you get this on camera? Павел Лазарев. I was sent to contain this mess, and you're going to help me. Comrade, state your name. Kasimir Sikov, Starshina, First Guards Tank Army. I, uh, I hear mechanic. I was told despite your limited education, you understand German equipment. Well, I scavenge parts from Panzer tanks to keep our T-34s running. How can I be of service, Comrade Lazarev? There is a machine. I need you to deactivate. It is called a cyclotron. It leaks strange radiation. You have seen what it does to men. Da, Colonel. What if the same thing happens to me? You will not fail, Zikov. You may not survive, but you will not fail. Understood? Da. Dearest Reis, it is me, your Casimir. I am sorry to break my promise. But I will not be coming home to you. I have orders to turn off a German machine. Diesel engines, I, I understand. Radios I can't fix, but this. Things down here try to kill me. <laughs> Perhaps they already have. But not before I finish my mission. I cut all the power, but still the machine run. And I swear, sometimes I I hear it call my name. I am going to try one more thing. If the dead will let me. I have tools, but not many bullets. That swallows girl who ordered me down here. I do not do this for him. I do this for the world. For Mother Russia. I do this for you, Raisa. My love for you will never die.
granted. Commencing recording. It's late here in Berlin, and it's cold. So I'm going to make this brief. Everything is so much worse than I thought. Sorry, Weaver. How's your day going? I'm going to be frank. I'm not sure who the hell I can trust at BND. There's an atmosphere. People are leaving. New people are coming in. And I'm not sure how much choice any of them have in it. Point is, something seems to have everyone spooked and looking over their shoulder. Cold War paranoia. Who would have thought it? All I know for sure is there's a project file called End Station. Code in. Access granted. Commencing recording. I'm hearing that something has lit a fire under the KGB's metaphorical ass. Something they found out about End Station. There are, shall we say, extremists within their ranks that are pushing a new agenda. Their department thinks they might have uncovered something that could be a game changer for the Cold War. All I know for certain is that they've allocated a huge amount of resources to fund a ground operation in Poland. What worries me more is I have no idea who around me I can really trust. Some here may already be working with them. They may even be listening in. Code in. Access granted. Commencing recording. So, this is the last you'll hear from me, for a while. I'm starting to feel that the walls are closing in, if you get my meaning. Two of my contacts have already been exposed. Well, I say exposed, but to be more specific, one started singing as soon as they were detained. The other fell out of a window. Before their untimely accident, they sent me a tape. I think it's what the new department is going after. End station. An associate at the BND, maybe the last one I can trust, will ensure its delivery to you. Right now, I have no choice but to move and burn everything in my wake. Forgive my breaches of protocol, Weaver, but these times are unprecedented. Hey, you know me, don't you? Sure you do. Hopefully. You're part of Weaver's strike team, right? My name's Maxis. I'm a friend. Sorry to start off with some bad news, but friends need to be honest with each other, so... I have reason to believe my communication channels with Weaver are compromised. I would say we do not know who is listening, but even an idiot could probably work it out. Russians. So, I will continue to make these recordings in the hope that they may find their way to you without interference. Uh, P.S. Good luck. I'm going to assume you can hear me, because the alternative is far too depressing to think about. I'm in the field, but not an actual field that would be silly. It's a churchyard in Romania. Don't worry, there are no vampires. Even if there were, I have garlic and weapons. To be perfectly clear with you, I have reason to believe the BND have been compromised. So I have gone what some would term a little bit rogue. It pretty much means I'm operating without authorization or oversight. But since I've spent the last seven years working alongside spies from both East and West, you can hardly blame me. Don't worry. I know my scorpions from my frogs. This experiment. End station. If I'm right, 
It may really be the turning point the Russians believe it to be. We have to stop them. I was the one. I'm the reason you're here. I gave Weaver the Russian intel about the site in Poland and told him how much the Russians were interested in it. Right now I'm operating on the theory that they knew that there was something big here. An unnatural power that they could perhaps harness and turn upon their enemies. Something no nation could be prepared for. Wait, has Weaver even told you about the extent of the outbreak zones? Is anyone out there? Can anyone hear me? I do not know how long I have been here. There are no days to count. Only an endless twilight. Like a dream that keeps shifting whenever I try to focus on it. <sighs> there are some strangely beautiful sights here. Great glowing gems, luminous creatures that float on the mist. But beauty means little when you are always being hunted. I should never have gone near that shimmering light. I should never have touched it. I thought it was a sign from God. There is no God here. There is no God. In the name of the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, it is me, Mariska. I do not know if my words reach you anymore. I do not know if you care at all about the damp. For that is surely what I am. Damp. And I just want to know. Why, Lord? What did I do to end up here? It is not the hell I expected, no lake of fire, only a cold, perpetual half-night that somehow seems even worse. Dead men wander this land, feasting on the living, if you can call it living. And I fear they may be. Lord, they are coming. I beg you, protect me. Deliver me from this place. I should not be here. I should not. Quite a few others who got trapped here like me. And every time, every single time, the question comes up, are we in hell or not? I mean, sure, this has to be hell, right? There's dead people, the, the demons. I feel as far from God as you can get. I even thought I saw ghosts here. But now I'm thinking maybe they're just folks back home, and, and, and somehow I'm seeing them through the veil that separates our worlds. Which brings me to the thought I just, I, I just can't get out of my mind. What if there is no hell? What, what, if, what if this place is just a place? <laughs> what if people came here before and, and got out? And, and that's how we got the whole idea of hell in the first place. <laughs> I, I, I mean... That should give me some hope, right? It means you can escape. Then again, maybe hope is part of the punishment. Maybe hope is the ultimate cruelty. <laughs>
I hope someone out there can hear this. I'm not quite certain this device even works. You see, I'm an historian. I was touring ancient sites in Peru when it all went dark. Suddenly, I, I'm... I'm in this jigsaw landscape. This hodgepodge of creatures and artifacts. Like a collision of cultures and eras. I've seen medieval structures alongside 21st century buildings. I've seen ancient storybook creatures and mechanical monsters straight from a science fiction novel. And the thought I cannot seem to shake now is that the universe has a dumping ground for things that go bump in the night. Others I've encountered assume this is hell, but it's worse. It's the dustbin of history. It's the rubbish dump of time. When the universe is through with you, this is your final stop. Confession time. <laughs> this one's gonna sound a little nutsoid, but stay with me. Please, stay with me. So, I've noticed that ever since I landed in this place, well, I've noticed some changes in me physically, and hey, I am not crazy. Do not call me crazy, but mentally, too. Bad enough when my skin started to wither. I, I look part alligator. My nails are growing like crazy, and my teeth. What worries me more is how calm I am about it. I, I mean, at first I panicked, but the more I change, the less I mind. Plus, I am not as afraid of things I run into. I even... Don't judge me. Don't you fucking judge me. I've... I've eaten one or two of them. I gotta eat something. I, anyway, I don't know if it's the fog or those glowy crystal things, but this place changes you. Not all at once, but I don't think I could go back now, even if I knew how. 